what is going on guys it is pete and we are back so mike wallace and i were on a short hiatus because of college but now a3 academy is back and we are super excited to bring you some new content it was awesome to see all the subs and positive feedback we got even when we weren't posting stuff so if you haven't already and if you enjoy what you're seeing click on that red subscribe button down below we're almost at a thousand subs all right so uh what are we going to be talking about today well in today's video, we're going to be talking about the conservation of charge. So before we dive in, let's take a look at a classic example. And I hope everyone's done this before. And if you haven't, I suggest you go out and uh, live your life a bit and rub a balloon against your head and see what cool things you can do with your hair. What we call this static electricity. The high electronfinity of the uh, rubber in the balloon causes a buildup of opposite charges in your hair and in the balloon. And when you pull the balloon away from your head, the charges attract, making your hair stand up. If the system of the balloon and your hair had a total charge of zero before the process, you would have created charges equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. The principle in effect when you just simply rub your balloon against your hair is known as conservation of charge. And the conservation of charge states that the net charge, or the sum of all charges in any closed system, is constant. So from this, we can say that electric charge is neither created nor destroyed in a closed system. So what do I mean by this? Well, whatever electric charge I have at the start will be the same electric charge I have at the end. So looking back at my example, you could have argued that I quote-unquote created a negative charge in the balloon, but with that negative charge came a positive charge in my hair the net charge of the system remained unchanged. Every time you quote-unquote create a negative charge, some positive charge must also have been created and vice versa. So the net charge in any closed system is constant, and so electric charge is neither created nor destroyed. Now let's take a look at an example problem to see if this all makes sense. So, two identical metal spheres are charged. Sphere A has a net charge of positive 10. Sphere B has a net charge of negative 2. The spheres are brought together, allowed to touch, and then separated. What is the net charge in each sphere? For reference, Q is just what the letter we use to represent charge. So take a second to pause the video, think about the answer, and when you're ready, come back. Okay, so there should be a plus 4 charge on each sphere. Through the conservation of charge, we know that the sum of the charges on spheres A and B have to be constant throughout this whole process. After the spheres are separated, the sum of the charge has to remain positive 8 or 10 plus negative 2. Since the spheres are identical, the total charge is evenly divided by the two spheres, and 8 over 2 is 4. So I hope that all made sense, and I, I just want to leave you guys with one last question. And that last question is, what is the overall electric charge of the universe? So we know since the entire universe, including the unobserved parts, is a closed system, the sum of all the electric charges must be constant. But what is that constant? In short, it's physically impossible to measure the charge of the universe because it's ever-expanding. However, most scientists believe that the universe has a total electric charge of zero, or it's electrically neutral. When you look at the cosmological scale, gravity is the most dominant force in our world today. Now, if the universe had a net charge, this wouldn't be the case, and electromagnetic forces would take over. I could go on, but I'll leave you to do your own exploring. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, the more you know, the better you are.